Hi, I'm Daniel Wagner, Senior Hydrologist at Sontec. Today's instructional video will cover how to set up a, a new pro survey project in IPAC, as well as the configuration of Hydro Survey App as an acoustic topper instrument for bathymetry surveys, as well as water velocity mapping. So when you open IPAC for the first time, um, IPAC will display a Halifax survey in the main shell that is seen as IPAC's golden data set. If you then want to create a new project, you will go to select File, New Project, and then you can uh, use a specific project name. In this case, we are going to uh, demonstrate a Lake Miramar survey that we've done previously. So if we type in Lake Miramar in the project, um, you can create different project folders and I will show you later during the video how to do that. So if we just for now include that on the IPAC 2018, it will create now a new project and you will see that the main shell is, is blank. There's no images displayed there um, and we will uh, populate information as we continue. What is important to note is two aspects. You have your main shell where your image and survey data will be displayed um, in the center of the screen, but you also have a couple of tabs on the left. There's project manager that you use to uh, select project or manage your projects accordingly. In this case, I've created a number of groups um, to store the, the different projects I've surveyed previously. Um, in this case, on the surveys completed, I've, I have a couple of surveys as well as uh, test data that I've currently done at Sontec. The next step is project items. This is now project specific. So in the case of Lake Marama that I've created, you will see that there's nothing really recorded in the project itself. There's no raw data files or, or sorted data files. Um, and this is normally our brand new project will start off with, uh, with the folder structure, uh, with no data available um, to view. So the first step and the most important one is to set a geodesy. So you will see there's a couple of icons just below the main menu selections. And if you start from the left, you will see there's a, a, a earth ball geodesy and you will select that first. That is always your first step that you need to perform uh, when creating a new project. The most a uh, um, simplistic way is to use WS84 um, as a reference um, and in this case we have UTM North that we select. Um, to determine the exact zone there's various documents you can download. My recommendation is that you um, get a hold of a KMZ file uh, that you can upload on Google Earth and I have a example here that I can show you. So in that case, if I select UTM zone under my favorites, you will see that the whole Google Earth is now mapped with uh, the UTM zone maps. And if I right click, if I click on one of those squares, you will see the zone um, and the different values, west value and east value for that specific zone. That is probably the easiest and most accurate way to determine in which uh, UTM zone your survey is located. So if we select or go to the area uh, like Maramar, which is going to be demonstrated today. And if I now um, left click on the mouse, you will see that the zone, the UTM zone is uh, zone 11 uh, that I can select for IPAC. So if I go now back to IPAC Geodesy, It's UTM North Zone 11. And then depending on in, in which area um, your units are located, um, it's either meetup or international feed or, or the specific units you want to use for. So in this case, it's in, a, uh, in the US, so we select international feed. We keep the day depth unit the same as horizontal, so for that portion we leave. And we're not using RTK tide. And I will come back to RTK tight and how that's applied. So this is probably the most uh, basic way of setting up a survey itself. So if we select, accept those um, settings, 
Now our, our survey will be based on UTM North Zone 11. The next step would be to go to your settings um, option. Um, under general, there's a couple of options. I think that the ones that I've found the most important initially is selecting your border color to a different one than a default black because normally it's displayed on a very dark background image. Um, as well as the matrix outline, you could probably keep the same red color as well. Under soundings, um, <coughs> you would like to set the style to pixel. Uh, the size of the soundings you can adjust as, as you fit. In this case, we just leave it at one. Um, it's going to be small displayed on, the, on, your, uh, on your screen, but you can increase the size if, if you need to increase and make it more viewable. Uh, the next one would be track lines that I think is, is important. Um, event increment means this, the system will show where the survey was performed. So it will draw a line behind the boat as the, survey, as, uh, as the boat travels across the survey area. Um, if you type in four nines, that means it will create draw a line continuously from the start to the end of the survey. If it's less than four nines and you, for example you say uh, 10 then it means it will only draw the last 10 seconds behind this the, the platform. So I would recommend using four nines because then you have a get an accurate idea of where the survey was performed during the entire time frame. Um, there's a couple of other parameters here as well that I could probably just quickly highlight targets. This is used where you have a specific target in mind, for example, if there's a shallow area in the survey uh, area that you don't want your, your, your vessel to, to enter in, you can create targets to make sure you're not entering in those areas, or if there's specific uh, survey features that you want to, to um, focus on during the survey, for example, if there's an inlet structure um, or a deep channel, um, also, you can create targets beforehand and then when during the survey you know exactly what, where those uh, specific features are located and then you can focus on that uh, a, a bit more detail. Plant lines is used to, as a guide uh, to manage the survey itself. So if you do uh, perform uh, or, or create plant lines at your server will be structured according to those lines. There are a couple of automated features in IPAC which will automatic, automatically initiate the data collection when you enter those lines and when you're leaving those lines. And they are called entrance and exit gates in IPAC. Um, it is a very structured way of doing it and I would highly recommend that you make use of plant lines during the survey itself. I think that's probably the, the only features I want to focus on at this stage under settings. So if we just apply there and then uh, accept those uh, changes, then the next step in, in the process is going to the editor um, section. 